Well, another Believe in Chargers podcast production with the great Lorenzo Neal, Matt Money Smith here, and unfortunately, Lo, we're coming off another loss. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into that one in the second portion of the pod. We'll preview the first of two matchups against the Chiefs in the third portion of the pod, but I think it's worth getting started here is, is someone who's lived through it. The Chargers are two and three. They are one of just four teams in the AFC with a losing record. You've got 11 teams that are at 500 or better. Many of them are, are going to be opponents of the Chargers throughout the remainder of this season. Two of them obviously are in their own division, the three and three Raiders, the five and one Chiefs. How, when you were playing low, how often did you take a look, if ever, at the big picture, or is the cliche that it's a week-to-week -week leg, does that really hold? And, and all you care about is the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday. Well, man, I think it's twofold. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you say, hey, next game, next man up, let's play football. And, and that's the cliche, and that's what guys will tell you that they're saying, and that's what you're going to hear from the Chargers, which you should. But, man, let's not be mistaken. You absolutely, just like you and I are looking and being optimistic and look at the rest of the schedule and say, what's your chances? You look at strength of schedule. You look at the teams that you're going to play. And absolutely, you have to. I mean, yeah, you don't concentrate on it, but you say, hey, look, who are we chasing? And yeah, coach is going to say, keep your blinders on, you know, like the racing horses. Put your blinders on and say, let's just worry about the next opponent. I understand that. That's all fine and dandy, Matt, but you do have to look to the left and to the right and not behind you, but look in front of you. Who's those teams you have to chase? Because right now you see right. the Kansas City Chiefs at five and one and you're trying to win that division. It's a big week. Yeah, no doubt. And like I said, we'll get into that and, and just sort of how the Chargers match up with them. What's going sure. on with the Chiefs this year? Because it is quite a bit different. But I think one thing that's important is sort of use history as our guide, not I'm not talking, I'm not talking ancient history, like when Lorenzo Neal was playing in a leather helmet and no pads. <laughs> <laughs> it was too obvious. I telegraphed it. But recent right. history. Yeah. Last year, the Chargers were six and six. They lost a game in Las Vegas to the Raiders. And I can remember walking out of that stadium saying, man, that's that's a bad loss. That might be the one that 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 gets them. And then they rip off four straight and they're at 10 and six. And I think when you look at there's there's two things to this statement here, Lo. When you look at the schedule, you see winnable games. Games because they're at home. Games because they're playing teams that maybe aren't great, at least through six games of the season. We don't feel like they're great teams and they're winnable games on the road. Patriots on the road. Packers on the road. Jets on the road. Raiders on the road. You get the Ravens at home. You get the Lions at home. You get you know Denver twice still. You still get the Raiders one more time. Like You can make that work. But I think the most important thing to remember for fans when they're trying to lay out, okay, how do we get to 10 and 7? Think about what the fans of those other teams are saying when they look at the Chargers on that line on the schedule. Like, what is this team right now? Is this a team that, that is as good as we thought they were when we look at the roster on paper? Do we feel that way or do we feel like we're learning a little bit more about them and we don't feel as good? about what the Chargers are when you stack them up against the Jets, against the whatever, take your pick, you know, the Bills, the the Ravens and that. And that's what, Matt, that's what makes this so interesting this year because you, you talked about those teams and let's talk about just the latter of those two. The Jets don't have a quarterback, but they're still in the thick of things. Look how they're able to play. And that goes to show you the men, the character, and the leadership. There's a Jets team that everyone's saying, make a trade. And look at these guys, how they rallied around this quarterback who's probably a backup or maybe a third. But look, at they're still in the thick of things. Look at Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns is another team. Don't have Deshaun Watson. But look at the way that they rallied around one another, beat the San Francisco undefeated 49ers. Look at the Jets. They beat a team that's undefeated at the same time. Two teams said in the AFC said, we know that Vegas and all those talking heads out there the Jets doesn't have a chance against the mighty Philadelphia Eagles. And the Cleveland Browns should not beat the San Francisco 49ers. But what happened? 
That's why you play the game, man. And you saw those two teams, when all odds were against them, they said, you know what we're going to do? Each man's going to grab each brother by the hand and say, look in the mirror and say, if it is to be, it's up to me. And they say, I won't let each other lose. And so when you talk about the AFC, yeah, the Chargers, when you look at talent, you look at the quarterback, you look at the defense, all the, they have stars all over the field. And I'm not saying, they're st- you know, you look at Cleo Mack, star. You look at Bosa, a star. But are they playing necessarily like right. stars? Have, the, have their best part of their careers a little past them? You know, Cleo and Bosa, are they a little older? But they're still posed to be elite players. You can get six sacks in one game, you're playing pretty good. So when you look at these teams that were in this conversation, that are ahead of the Chargers, are right even with them, sometimes it make you scratch your head because I'll take Herbert any day over the Raiders quarterback here. I would take Herbert any day over what Cleveland has. So when you think about the AFC, the Chargers are still in it. But when we say look at their strength of schedule, what they have left, Matt, we did that and we saw Tennessee, a Tennessee team that shouldn't have beat the Chargers. So 100%. sometimes they play down to their level of competition and that's the thing that's disheartening and make you say, hmm, what team are we going to get? Yeah, and the, the, the interesting thing is they don't just play down to the level of competition. They play up to the level of competition. Yes. Whatever is called for in any given game, the Chargers have answered that bell. You've got to trade punches offensively with the Dolphins. No problem. We'll score over 30 points. you got to trade punches with the Vikings because Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson are playing good off. Okay, no problem. We'll put up some points. You got to get into a rock fight with the Raiders, with the with the Cowboys, with I shouldn't say the Raiders. You got to get into a rock fight with the Titans and the Cowboys. Okay, let's do that. They don't dictate terms. That's the mm. problem. Like mm. you mentioned the Browns and the Jets, and it's a it's a great those are two great teams to bring up low. Why? They have an identity. Okay, we're limited offensively. We don't have Nick Chubb. We don't have Deshaun Watson. But you know what? We got one of the best damn defenses, if not the best defense in the league. And that's how we're going to win this game. The Jets. Zach, guess what? We got an elite defense right now. Elite defense. You can't throw interceptions. You can take a bad sack. Let's take the bad sacks. You know, maybe you missed. You didn't get through the progressions as quickly as you should have. Let's not throw the interceptions. Let's take the sacks. Let's win on field possession, on field position, and let's win with field. And that's what they've they've adjusted. They've crafted an identity. And that's to me what's missing. The Chargers don't have that yeah. identity. The Miami defense has let them down. We thought it was going to be an elite unit. It is not. But the offense is like, okay, you know what? This is going to be our identity. You're going to have to score 30 points to beat us. You know, we might yeah. not score 40, right? And like that to me is is what's happened and, and what has led to this start for the Chargers. Money, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And just to add on to that, you think about for the last five years, which team in the NFC has been right there. It, they've been always competing, and it's been because of their defense. The San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. You think about Jimmy G. They said, don't lose the game because we have an elite defense. Go out, don't turn the ball over. Let's run the ball. Let's get some identity. Their identity was their defense. The Chargers, for the last several years, you look at this team, it's been, okay, you have this high-powered offense and this quarterback, and then when the games, when you need them to be prolific and score, like against the Dallas Cowboys, you put up 10, 17. You know, games that you're supposed to have this, you know, an offense that you're not really going to, that can't score, and the defense is that this is the defense, the defense should take over this game against the Tennessee Titans, you give up 20, 30. So it's like the inconsistency, like you're saying, the identity of the Chargers, no one has, no one knows their identity in which Charger team is going to show up. We haven't right. seen that team play together collectively for wins yet. That's yeah, a perfect uh, place to put a pin in it and and get into what went wrong and why they only scored 17 and, and how they only allowed 20 points and how they got stuck with a loss against the Cowboys. And we'll get into that here next. Well, though, it was a, it was a frustrating Monday night football game. For the Chargers, you know, it's really both sides of the ball. The defense holds a team that's averaging almost 28 per game to 20. That's a win. The offense only scores 17, and seven of them came courtesy of a short field on a turnover created by a brilliant special teams play and a bit of a, you know, a a bit of a mistake by Tolbert on the Dallas side of things, but the Chargers capitalized. So the offense, if you take away the short field, was only able to put up 10 points, and seven of them came 
on their first drive after a dynamic punt return put them into plus territory from Darius Davis. So it was a really rough game for the Chargers. I think it was a rough game, particularly for Justin Herbert. You know, you, you can look at the numbers and make of them whatever you want. 227, two touchdowns, only took one sack. But we don't see Justin Herbert miss open throws like he did in that game. One to Keenan would have been a touchdown. That was a 10-point swing at the end of the first half. He misses Keenan. They have to punt. The Cowboys get a field goal out of that. And then he misses Keenan again in the second half, wide open on the same left sideline. Exact same play, a sluggo. Deron Bland does a stinking somersault. Keenan broke it off so hard. And Herbert just couldn't make that connection. The offensive line was getting bullied and pushed around. And, and I think I'll start there with you, Lorenzo. The running game was non-existent. 14 carries for 27 yards from Austin Eckler. A lot of people ask, oh, was it because, you know, he's still suffering from that, dealing with that high ankle sprain? It was the offensive line in front of them. Just they were on their heels. They were getting pushed back that whole game. Yeah, I always say games are won and lost in the trenches, Money Matt. And that's exactly what you're saying, Matt. It's just about the trenches. The, they, the Chargers did not play good up front offensively. They did not create a, line of, a new line of scrimmage. They got no push on the run game. Eckler was fighting for every yard that he had to get. They got pushed around through kind of Justin Herbert. And you start to see Herbert, which he doesn't do, is kind of, you know, start to hear footsteps, moving in the pocket, taking moves, taking his eyes off the field, downfield, taking his eyes off his receivers downfield. You saw him become a little flustered at times and just a little un, unherbert ass. So when you look at this game, and like you said, you, one thing you and I, Matt, I'm not saying I was a great basketball player. I know you were. You used to light it up. Oh, yeah. One thing you yeah. didn't do, Matt, you didn't miss the layup. And that's what Justin right. did. And that's what this team, you don't miss the layup. The hurt when you had Keenan twice, touchdown, big play on the other one. If those things, that's the layup. When you have those opportunities to take the big shots down the field, you don't miss the layup, especially when guys are wide open. And that, in my opinion, that sh that switch, the dictator of the of the game. This, you know, and also, yeah. like you said, it led seven points that you would have had for the Chargers led to three for the Cowboys. You can't do that in the National Football League and think you can win football games. Yeah, when I think of layups too low, the the first thing that comes to mind, and and you certainly saw it up close and, and personal, is Austin Eckler. You know, on that final drive, and now this is the second time. This is the set, and you could almost, I'm almost going to stick him with all three losses just because in the Dolphins game, Herbert makes a 12 yard completion to Gerald Everett to get the drive started, but then it's bang, 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 three and out. You know, that then you get three consecutive, two negative plays, and the third one you get sacked. So this was a three and out to lose the game. The game in Tennessee in overtime, you win the coin toss, you go three and out, they get great field position, you lose the game. They're three and outs. You're not first downs, not touchdowns. On those right. game-winning drives, it's first downs, not touchdowns. And what's the layup? Austin Eckler. Yep. You get Austin Eckler in the flat, on a smoke, in the just maybe it's a, it's a quick out or a quick sure. in. Sure. Those were there. Those were there. It's a second and two. First downs, not touchdowns. Herbert, you got to know where Micah Parsons is. He's taken a deep drop. He takes the sack. It becomes third and 10. And even on third and 10 low, there's Austin right there in the flat. You got four downs. It's it's the final drive. It would have been at worst eight yards, at best 15. And the thing, and just to, to put a button on that point before you take it from me, he's got 14 game-winning drives. I would project of those 14 game-winning drives, 10 of them featured Austin Eckler in those exact – okay, you're going to you're gonna play us too high. Guess what? Here's Eckler. He's going to make the first guy miss. He's going to truck the second guy, and he's going to be getting eight yards and everyone else, and there wasn't one single look in his direction. No question. And back in the day, like you said, when Moby Dick was a minnow, we had a guy by the name of LaDainian Tomlinson. So I'm going to make yeah. sure we tell you that too. But that was the guy that Drew Brees and Phillip Rivers, they knew in certain situations you check the ball down because he was going to make someone miss. Eckler has those same type of skills. Right. You look at Christian McCaffrey with the Niners. He's the same type of guy. You give him the ball out in the flat. The first guy, usually eight, nine, and ten times out of ten, they're not making that tackle. So when you're talking about that, that's what guys don't understand. Instead of going for the home run and taking the big play, get the little check down, Charlie. Move the chains. Get you know, make the defense come up. Now they got to be more aggressive, and then you open up the plays downfield. Right. But I know we got to wrap this up, Matt. But I'm just telling you, it's crazy because if you and I would, if I'd have asked you. The Chargers are only going to score 10 points at playing against the Dallas Cowboys, and the defense is only going to allow 17. You would have bet you would have bet your life savings. I mean, this is, as an offense, inexcusable. The defense played 
good enough to win that game. And unfortunately, other side of the ball this particular week, let them down. Yeah. It, it, look, again, the defense gets five sacks, six tackles for loss, special teams turnovers, short field, and that's what you're talking about with the offense. I'm not saying the offense didn't score the seven points. They did, but it was an assist to the special teams there. And it's the exact same score that they lost by in 2021, you know, 20 to 17. Um, it's a backbreaking interception when you still have two downs to play with. You don't have to force that ball there. Um, and again, so here's as we kind of wrap this and, and start to look forward to next week. I'll I'll leave it at this. The defense got gashed right in that first game, absolutely gashed by 500 yards by the Dolphins, and everyone's throwing up their arms. In the last three games, they're two and one. They have forced uh, six turnovers. They have 15 sacks, and they're able to kind of keep these teams in check. They got they get interceptions when they need to get interceptions. When the defense is asked to win the game, they've gone out and won the game. They did it with a pick at the end of the Raider game. They did it with a pick at the end of the Vikings game. And this week, they were good enough. They weren't great enough. Uh, and I'll get to that. You know, I'll, I'll get to, to an observation that I'd love for you to weigh in on when we focus on the Chiefs here in just a second. But that's good enough. Holding the Cowboys to 20, five sacks, six tackles for loss, a turnover is good enough to win the game. And the offense, especially against the Kansas City Chiefs, is just going to have to pick it up. They are going to have to be better when they arrive at Arrowhead. And we'll get to that here in a sec. All right, Lorenzo. So let's, you know, you know how it is. Shove it. You watch the film. You learn from it. And let's focus on Kansas City. On to Kansas City. Next game up. Next man up. What do we got? You got a team that's 5-1. and one. The Chargers are 2-3. and three. You lose this game. I hate to say it, but you can probably kiss the division goodbye. You can't fall three games back in the loss column, including a head-to-head -head to the Chiefs, and and feel good about the prospects of winning the AFC West, unless, of course, something dramatic happens to change the calculus there. So yeah. the, the one thing I just quickly want to start with, Lo, is the Kansas City offense has not been playing great. They scored 41 against the Bears. They're averaging 21 in their other five games. So... This could look very similar to what the D the Dallas game looked like because the Kansas City defense has been playing fantastic, giving up less than 15 points per game. Yeah, Kansas City defense, like you said, they've been playing lights out. And Matt, I know you can probably be there and probably, you know, you and Taylor Swift can probably do some more analysis <laughs> yeah. together. So I'm looking forward to hearing what, what she has to tell you when you get her on the show. I know the fans oh, yeah. are going to be excited that you got the one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know how you pulled that off money, but you're the man. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. That's how, Magic. There, that's there how I pulled it off. I tell you, the the Chargers, though, they understand what's at stake. Like you said, after the last game, you got to put it in the trash and you got to say, look, you learn from it, but you got the next team. And that's the Kansas City Chiefs, a team that's been in the Super Bowl, a team that's won two Super Bowl, a team that's shown its dominance. But when you watch the way that they're playing, they're not playing great, especially offensively. Mahomes is throwing, being Mahomes. Kelsey's being, you know, Travis Kelsey. But at the same sense, they're not playing great football. This is a great time for this Chargers to get right. You know they're going to have to score more than 20 points. And when you usually score, if you usually hold your team to 21 points or less, you usually win 80, 90% right. of your football games. And that's what the Chargers defense has been able to do. And I don't think, Matt, they're going to be able to hold them to 21. I think it's going to be they got to keep them under 25. And that can work. Um, so I just think this is going to be a very, very physical – a game but this is a team that we get to see what these chargers are made out of we get to see the coaching staff we get to see everyone because this is a must win i know people say oh you know you, yeah you can still go on a run and i get it and get it right but if you look at your your schedule and you look at the what you need that get right game the kansas city chief has got to be that get right game because you need it for your mental psyche this team is going through a lot of things and they do need this win in my opinion well, there's there's two things I'm looking at for this game. One is, you know, Derwin James got to get right. He's got to get right. Yeah. He's not, not only has he not been a positive this year so far, he's been a negative. The, yeah. He's been a net negative with his unnecessary roughness penalties. One led to a field goal. I mean, quite simply, it led to a field goal. The Dallas Cowboys were stopped on third down about eight yards short of the sticks. It would have been about a 53-yard field goal. Now, Aubrey could have made that field goal, sure, but would have been from 53 yards instead. Free 15, chip shot field goal's good. Like, and Derwin had two of them in that game. Derwin has zero interceptions, zero sacks, 
I just don't feel him making the impact on the games through five so far this year. And this is one of the best defensive players in the league. And yeah. for whatever reason, it's not happening. So like to me, and I don't know if this makes sense to you, Lo, but I'll just throw it out there. He's been one of the best players covering Travis Kelsey at times. To get him right, if I'm Brandon Staley, I just tell him one thing. Hey, man, where 87 goes, number three goes. And that's it. That is your assignment today. Wherever he goes, you if he's blocking for the run, you blow him up. If he's in the slot, you press him. If he's out wide, you're out wide, playing outside corner on a tight end. That's your job. If he's not on the field, check with Kenneth. I'll let him know what you're doing. But to me, that's the way to get him right. Get him engaged. Give him that assignment that he can win. And if he, if he does win, the Chargers win the game. If he can take Kelsey away, the Chargers will win that football game. Oh, man, you, 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 you're, I'm in, in the same church, same pew. You're preaching to the choir. This comes down to Travis Kelsey. If the, if the Chargers are able to bracket coverage at times, double him at times, especially on the third and four or five, you know that they're going to go to him. Get up and disrupt him. Get up in his face, put a guy on, on, on him, take away the inside or outside, and make sure you put a hand on him, and then you play out, 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 outside coverage. Are you bracketing? Because you know he's going to be that guy that's going to sticks. You know he's going to be the guy that him and Mahomes, they got, you know, it's they, it's running. It's running all the time. They got a read route. He's going to read. So that's why you got to disrupt his timing. And someone's got to get home. The pressure from Cleo Mack and the other guys up front, they got to put pressure on Mahomes and make him uncomfortable because yeah. you can't ask these guys to cover all day, not against this right. offense. It's stop Kelsey, make Mahomes beat you somewhere else. Do not let Travis Kelsey beat you. I'm with you. Derwin James has to play a lot better. He's, you know, he's pushing, he's pressing, but you have to control Travis Kelsey. Keep him under 60 yards. Keep him under 60 yards and you win this game. 100%. And I think offensively, I, I'm not at practice. I don't know what the issues are. Just come on, Justin. You've got to target Quentin Johnston. It's getting ridiculous. He had Justin Herbert had more receptions in the Dallas game than Quentin Johnston did because of the pass defense that that fell back into his lap that he carried for a first down. He had more receptions. He had more receiving yards than Quentin Johnston, wow. your number one pick, who was out there for nearly all of the pass snaps, or at least I think he was out there for sixty percent of the pat the dropbacks, and he did not get any targets unless Justin was in severe duress. He threw, threw him the ball when it was intercepted by Gilmore at the end of the game, and he had one other target when he was going down, and his arm was hit by Dante Fowler as he let it go. If you're not going to target him, get him out of the game. If you're not Agreed. willing to look at his way. Like that's, Agreed. you know, Mike Williams, low. Mike Williams left the game in the first half against Minnesota. He is still the second leading receiver with 19 catches, and he still has the second most receiving yards with 249, and he has not played in two and a half games. Wow. That, you've you've got to find somebody else. You're, you're right, and that's what Kellen Moore has to say. Look, at practice this week, you say you're not at practice, nor am I. But this is where you have to make a conscious effort in, 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 in putting in the program, putting in the plays, when you're going through and say, hey, we're going to script these first 15. you got to get him involved. This 100%. is in the practice plan. You have to put him in the plan. You have to put this guy in the game plan and go over and say, no, Herbert, this is his play. This is the coverage you're going to be getting. He needs to win. And it's got to go, and they got to practice it at practice. He's got to, Herbert's got to come to him and say, he's my first read. Look him off and then go to him at practice. You got to start to build that confidence. And you're absolutely right. You got to target the guy because it's just unacceptable. And like you were saying, if you're not going to use him, then get him off the field. And I'll wrap it with this, Lo. This is the great thing about, nobody plays the Chiefs, maybe the Bengals recently, but the Chargers play, this is the Chargers game log against the Chiefs since Herbert arrived. 30 to 27, 27 to 24, both losses, last second field goals, a 30 to 24 win in week three from Justin Herbert when he threw for four touchdowns, lose 34, 28 in overtime, lose 23, 20 in overtime, and then cruise to an easy win when everybody was being rested. But those five games, they're field goal games in the losses and an overtime loss, and you won by six points. They're going to be in this game. You got to execute. You have no, to right. execute. You said layups, no dumb penalties, the unsportsmanlike, the unnecessary roughness, none of that stuff. Uh, and that's that's how you get out of here with a win. You're three and three after knocking off the Chiefs and giving them their second loss. And talk about believe in Chargers. I mean, a lot of believing going on if you can pull that off coming out of Arrowhead. No question, Matt. Well, I'm looking forward to next week, and hopefully we got the big victory so we can have the celebration and quit talking negative. So it's going to be a great game. You're Like you said, they're going to be in this game. 
just don't find a way to lose it. Why don't we find a way to win it? That's what I want to see. Perfect way to end it. We're going to be talking about a victory next week, Lo. I can feel it, I think. Let's do it. Cheers.